hard to imagine. But just 25 years ago, mobile phones were as big as handbags. Now, they look like this. And these little devices have more power than the first rocket that flew to the moon. And that's exactly what our episode is about today. Small capacity, but big power. And with this, welcome to the garage. What do you think? Which one of these coffee specialties will give you a better boost in the morning? The espresso or the cafe americano? The espresso, right? Exactly. And the same kind of concept applies to engines. If you think about the way engine values have changed over the past 20 years, now you can get way more performance out of your engine capacity thanks to boosting. And we're going to talk today about boosting with the help of our expert when it comes to engines and powertrains at Continental. Here is Jan Erhard. Jan, great to have you. Hi, Chris. Hello. So you're going to boost our brains today. And what did you bring along? Is this something you kind of like go to bed with and wake up with? or? Well, as an engine guy, I always carry this with me, of course. Of course. So as you know, an engine needs air in order to, um, to burn the fuel. Mm -hmm. The air is sucked via the intake valve into the cylinder. It is burned inside the cylinder. And afterwards, the exhaust gas leaves the cylinder via the exhaust valve. Okay. The more air we are able to feed into the cylinder, the more performance we can create. Uh -huh. And the most efficient way in order to boost the engine is turbocharging. Okay, now I'm pretty sure our car guys out there know what it is, but tell us, what, what does it do? What, what is a turbocharger? Well, let's take this very simple model. We do have a turbine wheel, we do have a compressor wheel, and we have a shaft that interconnects both. Mm -hmm. Now try to propel the turbine. From here, like right. blowing out a candle, right? Huh? See, by propelling the turbine, the compressor wheel starts to spin, um, starts to compress air, and the compressed air is then fed into the cylinder, improving the performance of the engine. Hmm. Hmm. I think I know what you mean. Now check this out. If I were to draw your little description here on a piece of paper, I'm not Picasso, but... <clears throat> Now, sorry for the bad drawing, but this is how I understood it. You have the turbine wheel, right? Which is powered by the exhaust stream. And since the turbine wheel and the compressor wheel are on the same axle, the compressor wheel is also propelled at the same time, sucking in the air, compressing it, putting it back into the valve to close the loop. You got it. Yes. How do you like my drawing? Well, not bad, but I brought the real model. Yeah, of course, you're the expert. So this is how a real turbocharger looks like. Uh -huh. So we do have the turbine wheel, we do have the compressor wheel and the shaft that interconnects both. Mm -hmm. Now imagine the shaft rotates up to 300,000 revolutions per minute. That means the tip of the compressor wheel moves at a speed beyond 2,000 kilometers per hour. Whoa. That means if you would take the compressor wheel, put it on the road, it will travel from Hamburg to Munich in 20 minutes. <laughs> That's fast. So from an engineer's point of view, though, why do you necessarily want to put more air into the engine? Chris, are you hungry? Always. Come on. Come on. Okay. Not sure how you did this, Jan, but I like this idea. So what did you want to show me? Well, we talked about boosting the engine. And the same idea applies here. Okay. So if you want to speed up the fire, we simply boost additional air into the fire. Ah. To light up the fire. I get the idea. Now we got a barbecue going. All right. That looks good. So uh, what does the sausage have to do with the whole thing though? Nothing, it's just delicious. Okay. Wow, thank you very much for that spontaneous barbecue. There's one more thing that I wanted to show you. As we learned, this device works fine as long as we do have enough exhaust energy to propel the turbine. Right. But in operating conditions where we do not have enough exhaust energy, we need a different solution. So what would that be? We simply replace the turbine by an e-motor. So now we propel the compressor by an e-motor. And you have the same effect. And we have the same effect, the compressor is increasing the density of the air, which is delivered to the engine and improving the performance of ah, the engine. I get it. Well, this is how the real deal looks like. 
That means if we combine the e-compressor with the turbocharger, we can further downsize the engine and thereby further reducing the fuel consumption and the emissions of the engine. I get it. Now I know what you guys mean when you talk about downsizing. And this is what I mean when I talk about downsizing. Down to the wonderful, lovely doppio espresso. Mm, wonderful. Now I know how it works and I'm pretty sure you do also. And there's one more thing we have to do, Jan. So stay right where you are, because no show is complete without our selfie. Cheese! Thank you very much, Jan. And be sure to tune in again next time when you need another boost on information, technology, and innovations right here from the garage. See you then. <laughs>